They showed up unannounced. Lord Whitehill is in a lather. I assume you explained to Lord Ethan why they're here? A business with Garrett. I told him. Lord Whitehill knows Garrett is a squire to this house. Or was, I suppose. Is. Was. It makes no difference. The Whitehills were clearly in the wrong, so don't give him any satisfaction. Out there, you were decisive and firm. Now do it again with these bastards. Let's not do something rash. Things are bad enough as it is. I can handle Lord Whitehill. Well said, my lord. Now is not the time to anger Lord Whitehill any more than he already is. He's got five times as many men, and the backing of House Bolton. All the more reason to stand up for ourselves. Only cowards and dead men roll over. Lord Ethan, is it? My condolences for your father and brother. The late Lord Forrester was no friend to me or my house, but to his family it's still a loss. My only regret is I wasn't there to drive the dagger into his heart myself. I've been waiting for this day all my life. The Foresters finally get their due. How dare you! I dare! And I'll do as I damn well please. And no bread and salt! What kind of fucking house receives a lord with no fucking bread and salt? You bloody amateur. No courtesies. I should have expected as much. Bloody foresters. Calm yourself, old man. You little fuck! That's how you talk to a lord! You foresters have shit on us for generations. Well, now the Starks are no longer around to have your back, are they? We're the power in the North now. Roose Bolton is the Warden of the North. Aye. And we've been his bannermen for five fucking centuries. You cunt. Lord Ethan, you're losing control of this. We all serve House Bolton now. I'm not finished. Maybe if you hadn't been so fucking greedy with the Ironwood, things would have been different between us. You squandered your share. Our share was taken from us. We had no fucking choice but to harvest what was left. What is it you want, Lord Whitehill? Your man, the squire. We were minding our own business, keeping the king's peace, as his lordship here said. When your man attacked us for no reason. Hear that? Attacked for no reason. No reason? You murdered his family. Then you admit it was your man who killed my men. And a pig farmer at that. How do you answer for your squire, Lord Ethan? He acted in your name. And you are the lord of this house. Your men attacked and drew first blood. They murdered his entire family. You lost pig farmers, not soldiers. The soldiers worth a hundred of their type. Where's the fucking coward who killed my men? I know he's here. What have you done with him? I took care of it. He received his punishment and it's done. He's gone. What? Gone? That was my justice to deliver, boy, and you denied me of it. I'm not leaving until I have my justice. Now bring me the coward who did it, or you'll answer to Roose Bolton. What kind of fucking house is this? A house of honorable men. Lady Forrester. You bellow like a wounded boar, Lord Whitehill. Have you forgotten your manners? I mean no disrespect to you, my lady, considering your losses and all. But this... This is not over. It's over when my son says it is. I've heard enough, Lord Whitehill. Ethan is Lord of Ironrath now. By rights, his word is law here. If that displeases you, then I trust you can find the door. That lad may be Lord of this house, but Lord Bolton will have the final say. I'll send him a raven, letting him know a Forester man killed one of his own. That the new Lord Forester lied to my face and denied me my justice. 
Then we'll see whose word is law. We're in the right, Lord Whitehill. Remember that. Your son did well, my lady. He kept his wits while Lord Whitehill lost his temper. A lesser man would have been rattled, but Eaton here held his ground. You were brave, my son, but you'll need to be braver still when Ramsay Snow arrives to see you bend the knee. Prepare a raven. We need to send word to Mira in King's Landing at once. It troubles me to even ask this of you, but you must appeal to Lady Marjorie to intervene on our behalf. She is our best hope, and can be a powerful ally, especially now when your family so desperately needs her help. One moment. Oh, sorry, milady. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I can come back later if you'd like. No, it's fine. Come in. Begging your pardon, milady, but are you all right? If you don't mind my asking, you seem rather upset. I'm fine, thank you. Of course, my lady. Please hurry if you can. Lady Marjorie will be here any minute. Of course, my lady. You work for Lady Marjorie? I may be wrong, but it seems like you do. It's widely known that I work for Lady Marjorie. I've seen you with her before. You seem like good friends. I saw Lady Marjorie just this morning, outside the Royal Sept, talking to Queen Cersei. Cersei? They appeared to be having some sort of disagreement. I couldn't hear much, but... It was definitely an argument. What did they say? I couldn't make out much, but I know they were talking about the Starks and, and House Forrester. House Forrester? I hope you're not in any kind of trouble. But I thought you ought to know. Most people don't tend to notice a cold boy. Not in King's Landing with so many lords and ladies about. You see and hear all sorts of things when people don't even know you're there. Good night, my lady. Lady Marjorie, you're early. I was hoping there would be time for us to talk. Come, there's something we must discuss. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I've thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. And your poor family as well. You're very kind, my lady. Of course, Mira. But you must not despair. We will get through this together. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark. It raises questions at a time I can least afford. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the royal set. She mentioned the Northern girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. Her face was full of mirth as she said it. 
I'm not a traitor. Of course not. It's only an excuse to torment you and, by extension, me. She demands an audience. She wants an apology of some sort. For what, I don't know, but she's waiting for us now, and I promised I would bring you to her. I wouldn't ask this of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Circe with the wedding so near. I'll do as you ask, my lady. I knew I could trust you. Humor her. Tell her what she wants to hear. See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. You'll be fine. I know you will. You may feel one thing, but you must say another. Good luck. 